Right, so I have this. What this is, is a clockwork mechanism from a gramophone player. I got it off of eBay and it cost me uh, £20, I think. And I got it because I thought it'd be really interesting to see what we can do with that. It's actually beautiful. Let me give you a close-up of it. So that's it, and isn't it a beautiful mechanism? This is the main drive spindle there that turned the uh, 78. This is like an on-off switch. It, it actually moves a little pad against this governor wheel, and once that pad's pressed against the wheel, it won't uh, run. And when you flip it, the pad moves away from the governor wheel, and then that governor maintains 78 RPM. There's the wind handle. That is the main spring packed with a load of grease. So it's a lovely thing. Now, obviously, there are several things we need to do with this because they're missing. We need a handle to wind it. We need a little thing here so that we can flip it. So to turn it off and on, it needs mounting to a plate. These are almost an M5, but of course this is built to what, 1900s or so? So they're British Imperial sizes, not metric sizes. So I'm gonna to have to retap those, put a plate on it. We're gonna to have to find something to drop on that spindle. We need a little on off switch and then we need a handle here. So those are the tasks to do with it. Now, I'm thinking of attaching this to some magnets and a coil and making a generator out of it. But of course, it's a 78 RPM, it's quite low and it's meant to play records. It's not meant to uh, actually drive anything. So it's quite easy to stop it driving. So we need something low torque. So I retapped those to an M5 because that's a modern screw size. And I got myself a bit of breadboard and drilled some holes in it so that the whole thing can fit there. And on the other side, I've just sunk that down a bit because when you look at this, you'll see there's a raised level there and a little peg there and we don't want them catching. Now all I've got to do, obviously, is slot this thing together. There we go. And pop these screws in. There's the handle attached. I've also put a baseboard. Now then, this thing here is for turning it off and on. It moves a pad and I need a bar on there. So I've drilled it out and threaded it, found myself a bit of brass bar. I'm gonna screw that on and screw some feet on. Okay, and that's the motor mounted. Now remember I talk about generators in the same way. There are three components. There's the mechanical capture component, there's the conversion component, and then there's the storage or usage component. This is the mechanical capture. So I've mounted my um, clockwork motor to a board there's the on off switch when it's in the down position we can wind it up <laughs> i actually love this i think it's awesome give it a bit of wind and then we shift that into the up position and you can see that spindle turning so we've stored that energy in the spring and now we're using it to turn that spindle so obviously the next thing we need to do is do the generation bit so i had this disc from an old wimshurst machine all i've done is glue it on there and if i set that going here we go, <laughs> spinning beautifully. So I could make this into a Wimshurst machine, I guess. But what I'm actually gonna do is put some magnets on the rim and then, of course, a coil somewhere along there. It's got a bit of wobble to it, so I should really have sorted that wobble out, but c'est la vie, I didn't. And worse things happen at sea, don't they? Anyway, that is the basis of the generator because your speed is related to the distance from the center. So we can get away from the center, we get a faster speed, even though that's only turning at 78 RPM. Right, let's stick some magnets on. And there it is with the magnets all stuck around. And then north, south, north, south, north, south, obviously. And right here, I've got a coil from a microwave oven transformer. So all I need to do is give that a few winds to wind it up. It's my little on off switch and I can flick that and off she goes. Now the acid test, obviously, is can it light the LED? Because that's the competition rule. So if I just clip my LED to that, and, lo and behold, lighting an LED, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. Let's have a close-up of it. Okay, so if I could enter the competition, this is what I would put in. There's my disc with its magnets on the end being driven through that board, and there's my clockwork motor. There's the handle that we made. Here's the little on-off switch that we made. And that is just awesome, as far as I'm concerned. 
I really do think that's superb, eh? I mean, there are things wrong with it. That wheel's got a bit of a wobble. But it's a working model, and as a working model, it does what the competition said it needed to do, and that is like that LED. And this video is a bit of a template, really. If you think about the video, there's been an introduction, a how-to, some construction details, a close-up, and then a demonstration of the thing actually working. And remember, it is a proof of concept. Now then, on the videos, what we're going to do is collect them all to the, to the 31st of October, which is the closing date, and then after that, all of the videos videos that are runners up will be posted at the same time so that nobody gets an advantage for having been posted early. So get your videos in, we'll collect them, we'll review them and the, the runners up will get posted all at the same day. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. There is my clockwork generator stroke clockwork battery busy running away lighting this LED and I can tell you it generates between 9 and 12 volts and that's because of the wobble on the wheel. It's 9 volts when it's near and it's 12 volts, sorry, 12 volts when it's near and 9 volts when it's further away. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like, subscribe and enter the competition.